Hello world. Today we're going to be outlining an experiment we intend to do. For the purpose of this experiment, we're going to start with no base assumptions and no hypothesis. And our goal is to determine and test the convexity of water to a better degree than previously attempted by eliminating two variables. We're going to start by outlining previous experiments. Then we're going to show why water should have a theoretical convexity. We're going to determine how much that convexity should be based on the current assumptions. And then we're going to outline the parameters of the experiment we intend to do. And this is all open source. So this video and our stuff, any future videos, you can use that if you want to, because the basis of science is testing and repeating by differing parties and getting the same result. So the previous experiment that we're going to be very briefly outlining is the Bedford Level experiment. It was first done in 1838 by Samuel Robotham. What he did was place a telescope eight inches above standing water. He had a boat with a flag three feet above that water sail away for six miles. And based on the prevailing theory of the size of the earth, he determined that the boat should have been 11 feet below the horizon and out of view. He reported that he saw the boat for the full six miles, and he determined that the earth was flat. In 1870, John Hampton offered a wager of 500 pounds to anyone who could disprove this experiment. It was accepted by Alfred Russell Wallace. He said that because Robotham had placed his telescope so low to the water, he had been affected by atmospheric refraction and that he had looked around the curve. So Wallace moved his telescope up 13 feet 3 inches. He placed a black band on a bridge 6 miles away at 13 feet 3 inches. He placed a red disc in the center with its center at the same center of the telescope and the band. So based on his experiment, he determined that the earth was curved and water was curved. And this was contested by Hampton and his referee, Mr. Carpenter. It was also contested by Wallace and his referee, Mr. Coulter, that both parties were right. So after a few days, they decided on an umpire, and that was a Mr. Walsh. He sided in favor of Wallace. And after that, lawsuits ensued, and some people went to jail. If you want to find out more, it's interesting. Go research it yourself. Now, according to the theory of a spherical Earth with a diameter of 7,917 and a half miles, surface of all standing water must have a certain amount of convexity and it roughly drops at eight inches per mile squared so if this was our distance of one mile that would be a drop of eight inches at the second mile you would square two so you'll get four times eight 32 inches drop at the third mile it's roughly 72 inches now these figures can be more accurately calculated and verified yourself using the agreed upon dimensions of the earth and the pythagorean theorem and where these little black things, we didn't have white out. So on all these examples, we're going to have an observer height of zero. So A is going to be radius of the earth. B is the distance you intend to measure above the surface of standing water. And if you take A squared, B squared, square root it, you'll get C. And if you take C minus A, you will be left with the drop. But for the purpose of the experiment we intend to do, these calculations are irrelevant, as you will see in a second. Again, so the goal of our experiment is to test and determine the convexity of standing water. What we're going to do is build a channel of water a half mile long. And what we're going to use to make our straight line and why we're going to use it. So it's previously been stated that a telescope could be used above the water. But because of atmospheric refraction, it'll be argued that our line was void because of that. Also, we could use a laser level to determine the drop of the water above it. But it'll be argued that atmospheric refraction has voided that measurement also. So we could use a spirit level, but a spirit level is dependent on gravity. So it would track the same theoretical arc as the water. So we can't use that. So what we determined to do is to run a line under the water. It's going to be straight relative to itself and fixed at points on each end matching. And we'll measure in the middle of that line to determine the arc of the water. We're going to use three main components for the experiment. There'll be salt, water, and our line level. So now we have a question. How do we make a straight line underwater for a half mile long and be confident that it's straight relative to itself? Well, the best way to do this is to match the density of the water to the density of the line and attain a state of neutral buoyancy, and then apply tension to the line. Well, the problem with that is a state of neutral buoyancy is hard to attain and maintain. It could also be argued that we in fact did not reach neutral buoyancy and that we had an upward force acting on the line that would decrease our middle measurement also known as the Sagita. It could also be argued that we had a downward force acting on the line that would increase our Sagita measurement. 
So our solution is to do two measurements. In the first measurement, the water will be slightly denser than the line, so that if there is an arc in the line, it will be an upward arc, and it would decrease our Sagitta measurement. In the second measurement, the line will be slightly denser than the water, so that if there is an arc in the line, it will be a downward arc, and it will increase our Sagitta measurement. So our intent is to have these two lines fall at near neutral buoyancy, but to err on each side of neutral buoyancy. So in one measurement, our line will slowly ascend upward, and in the second measurement, our line will slowly descend downward. So to adjust the density of our water, we'll be using the salt, mixing it in. So let's say A represents our line, B represents the theoretical convex arc of water, and S is our middle measurement, the Sagitta, that we intend to find. So in the first measurement, A, the line, will be aired slightly upwards so that if its slight upward arc affects the Sagitta measurement, it'll affect it in a way that reduces it. So if our line goes up in the first measurement, it'll reduce our Sagitta. The water will be slightly denser than the line in this example. In the second measurement, the line, A, will be aired slightly downward so that if its slight downward slope affects the middle measurement, it'll affect it in a way that increases our Sagitta measurement. In this example, the line will be slightly denser than the water. So to determine that we have erred on the correct side of neutral buoyancy each time, density measurements will be taken on the line and the salt water solution using density equals mass over volume. An easier way to verify this is to just release the tension on the line after we've measured and before we've measured and observe if the line ascends slowly or descends slowly. So what we intend to do is to make these forces of upward arc and downward arc so negligible that when tension is applied on our line, that we'll get the same Sagitta measurement each time. If we measure two times with an upward error and a downward error, and it comes out that the Sagitta is the same, we can be confident that the line was straight relative to itself each time. So to calculate for a Sagitta under a portion of water, it's a little different than calculating for a tangent up above the water. So with a tangent, let's say you start at the top of S here and you start just going out, it's going to instantly start dropping off and it'll get exponentially more. So since we're underwater, half of the arc is upwards, half of the arc is downwards. So we're going to use half of our length as the input for L. So instead of the full half mile for L, we're going to do half of a half mile, which is a quarter mile. For our R input, we're going to do the radius of the Earth. We're going to be calculating to find the middle arc of the water, which will be S. So we'll take S equals the radius minus the square root of the radius squared minus the length squared. And if you want to get online and check out Sagitta calculators, you can figure this out for yourself. And we'll be calculating it here in a second. So here we have our Sagitta calculation. We have the Earth's radius in feet. We have a half mile, so 2,640 feet, but we're only taking half of that. For our input for L, so we have 1,320 feet. Here's the equation we're going to be doing. We got all the numbers out to the full decimal places, so we got some big numbers. But if we square R, the radius of the Earth, we come up with this. If we square L, which would be half over half mile, we get that. If we take R squared minus L squared, we come up with this number here. If we take the square root of R squared minus L squared, come up with this. Now, if we take the radius minus the square root of the radius squared minus our length squared, this is where it gets fun, we come up with 0 0.041679 blah, blah, blah feet. And if we convert that over into inches, we have our Sagitta measurement of half inch, roughly. So if we take our line and we put tension on it, and we put this side down one inch and this side down one inch, in the middle of our line, we should see an increase of a half inch. So one and a half inches if we do an inch on both sides. All right, if we double the Earth's size, we should still see a quarter inch of rise. So if we have one inch on one side, one inch on the other side, we should still get an inch and a quarter in the middle. So you guys can go online and check these equations out, run them yourself. Let me know if I messed up anywhere. And there we go. In conclusion, we intend to build a channel of water a half mile long and run a line that's straight relative to itself underneath that water and verify that it's straight relative to itself using two varying densities of a saltwater solution. Then we'll take two measurements of the Sagitta of both those lines, and if the measurements come out identical as we intend them to, 
by reducing the upwards and downwards forces enough, we will determine our line is straight relative to itself. And by doing the experiment in this way, we'll eliminate two variables, those being atmospheric refraction and the effects of gravity. And what we hope to determine at the end of this is if water is convex or flat. Thank you. Also, one more thing, check over my math, see if I did anything wrong. Uh, leave a comment if you think this is crazy, if you think it won't work, if you think it will work, tell me why, give me ideas. And also there'll be links in the descriptions for donations to fund this. And those will be non-fiat, only cryptocurrency, so check it out. Thank you. Bye.